I'm here to speak to you about the grand theme of the 21st century, which is the rise of artificial intelligence, which is going to transform every aspect of our civilization. And it's true what Steffi said, since I was a boy, I, my main goal was to build something that is smarter than myself, such that I can retire, and we have come much closer to that uh, than we used to be. And, um, since 1987, I've been publishing about this one algorithm, this one master program that is supposed to contain the essence of intelligence. And I've always been predicting that it's going to be so simple in hindsight that a high school student will be able to implement it. And back then, as a teenager, I said that this is pretty much the last thing the last significant thing a man can do, and um, everything else follows from that. And I'm still saying the same thing, and the only difference is that more people are listening today because the methods that we have developed over the decades on the way to this goal are now used, um, massively used by the world's most um, valuable companies, such as Microsoft, Google, and so on, for speech recognition, machine translation, image recognition, and so on. We are rather famous for our artificial recurrent neural networks. Neural networks are modeled after the human brain. In the brain, you've got about 10 billion neurons, each of them connected to about 10,000 other neurons. And, um, and the connections have strengths, weights, synapses, and they change through learning. And in the beginning, everything is totally random, but then over time, through learning, through training examples, through trial and error, these artificial networks that we have modeled after the brain, they learn a lot, like brains do. They are still smaller than what we find in brains, but they are already mm, pretty successful in many applications. The difference between our neural networks and those of others is that ours were the first that were very deep and could solve very deep problems and problems where there are long time lags between actions and consequences. And already in 1991, we had first very deep learning machines that could solve previously unsolved problems. However, uh, since then, we have greatly profited from the acceleration of computing hardware. And maybe you know that every single decade, computers are getting faster by a factor of 100 per euro, which means in 50 years, you have a factor of 10 billion, which is the number of humans on this planet, more or less, or also, by coincidence, the number of neurons, more or less, in your brain. In the Near future, for the first time, we are going to have rather cheap small machines with the raw computational power of a human brain. We don't have that yet, but rather soon we will have that. And then, only a few decades later, for the first time, we will have for the same price little machines with the raw computational power of all human brains combined. And there will not only be one machine like that, but millions and trillions. And everything is going to change. And the software, the self-improving learning software that is going to run on these machines is not lagging far behind. It's the neural networks that I mentioned before, which are continually uh, improved. Uh, in the new millennium, suddenly computers were fast enough, and for the first time, we could win all kinds of competitions with our recurrent networks, uh, machine learning competitions, pattern recognition competitions, handwriting competitions, and stuff like that. And for the first time, we uh, were able to achieve even superhuman results in certain limited domains. And that is what attracted the attention of all the big companies, which back then didn't pay too much attention before these results came out. And today, they are investing hundreds, and hundreds of millions and billions of uh, euros and dollars into, into that research. And, uh, and in, in the subsequent years, we were able to win all kinds of competitions ranging from cancer detection competitions, where the goal is to find the cancer cells in human tissue, 
or um, 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 uh, traffic sign recognition important for self-driving cars and stuff like that. And today, uh, the most valuable companies of the world um, are widely using our methods. Um, some people ask me, do you have a demo? And I uh, say, do you have a cell phone or a smartphone? Because one of the demos is right there on your uh, smartphone, available to a billion users. That's the speech recognition on your cell phone, which, as, far, as long as you have a, an Android operating system, is powered by Google. Google's speech recognition is now much better than it used to be half a year ago, because they replaced their old speech recognition system by something that is called long, short-term memory. That's a, a method that we um, have developed since the 90s in our labs in Munich and in Switzerland. And, um, and this, in speech recognition, usually you are happy if your new system is 5% better than the previous one, and 10% is really good. But suddenly, when they replaced the old system, they had an improvement of almost 50%. And now, if you try it out, even in a noisy room, in a noisy restaurant, speech recognition, which is a difficult problem, is working pretty well. Try it out. And Google is using the same LSTM, this long short-term memory recurrent network that we developed uh, through European taxpayer funding um, in the 90s and 2000s, is using that not only for speech recognition, but also for machine translation, where you translate from one language into another one. How do you do that? Well, you give lots of examples in English, for example, and lots of corresponding translations in French. And in between, there's this LSTM network, and it's totally randomly pre-wired, and it doesn't know anything about language. But just from these language examples, it learns the structure of English, the structure of French, how to go from the meaning of English to the meaning, the corresponding meaning in French, and so on. And uh, the same LSTM is also used, also by Google, by explaining what's to be seen in images. In comes an image, out comes a description of what you see in the image. All of that is powered by LSTM. And my prediction is that in a, in a couple of years, Google will end up as, as one huge LSTM. So all of this basic research work was funded not in Silicon Valley or somewhere, but here. This was funded by the European taxpayer in um, Germany and Switzerland and uh, in the European Union in general through the during the uh, so-called neural network winter of the 1990s and early 2000s, when very few people were interested in neural networks at all. Very different from what we have today, where all kinds of articles are being written about that. And, um, and where companies are spending a lot of money on this stuff. For example, uh, just a couple of years ago, the company DeepMind was totally unknown. It was a startup, and uh, then, Recently, 2014, they were sold to Google for 600 million euros. And, um, and actually, DeepMind was heavily influenced by my students. Uh, two of their first four guys were from my lab, and actually the first um, PhDs they had in machine learning and in um, artificial intelligence were from, from my lab. However, the, um, the seniors and the basic inventors of the um, method that, methods that everybody's using now, they are still based in Switzerland, or at least affiliated with our um, uh, company, Nascence, Nascence, which is pronounced like birth, but spelled in a different way, neural network-based artificial intelligence, that makes sense, which, um, whose goal is to build the first true AI that is practical and deserves the name. We had lots of successes in pattern recognition and also in, um, uh, in control of robots and stuff like that. However, at the moment, we have to admit that kids are still smarter than any of our self-learning robots, and even animals are. But I think it will, we will need only a couple of years, not so many years, until for the first time we will have something like an like an AI, an artificial intelligence, on the level of a small animal, such as a crow, which can learn to use tools and all kinds of things, or a little monkey, something like that. We don't have that yet, 
But I think it's uh, realistic to expect that within not so many years we will have that. And these little guys, they will do lots of the things that humans also do, such as learning to reason about the future in abstract terms, evaluate the different options, pick the op action sequences that are most promising in, um, on, on the way to arbitrary goals that you can specify. And, um, and even curiosity and creativity can be modeled in systems like that through something we call the formal theory of fun and creativity. How many more minutes do I have? Oh, there we go. All right. The formal theory of fun and creativity gives us a theoretical tool to allow us to build artificial scientists and stuff like that. Once, once we have animal-level AI, the step to human-level AI may be not that huge because evolution needed billions of years to evolve little capuchin monkeys and just a few millions of years on top of that to evolve human level intelligence. And technological evolution is millions of times faster than biological evolution because the dead ends are weeded out much faster. And for that reason, we can probably expect that once we have animal level AI, very soon afterwards, we will have something like human level AI and it's not going to stop there. And every profession is going to change. And all of civilization is going to change. And philosophy and everything is going to change. My kids were born around the turn of the millennium, around 2000. And the insurance mathematicians predict they are going to live to see the year 2100 because they are girls. A substantial fraction of their life they will spend in a world where the smartest are not humans and where the most important decision makers won't be humans. Everything is going to change. And, and in the end, AIs will colonize the solar system and use all the energy that is currently wasted by the sun, only a billionth of the energy is hitting the Earth. And from there, within just a few millions of years, they are going to colonize the entire galaxy. Huge things are starting as we speak. The universe wants to make its next step on its way towards deeper and deeper and more and more unfathomable complexity.